Yo, what is good YouTube? Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, it will be a match breakdown of my match on Azeroth. So if you do go and enjoy the video, hit the like and subscribe button. But let's get into the video. Alright, here we go guys. As we can see, there is two survivors currently running towards us. And I'm after getting up my stock now, pretty much, which is really good. Feng decides to camp a pallet, but you know I'm not wasting time on breaking that pallet due to the fact that I want to get my stock into tier 2. So, they're not really doing well to hide themselves away so I can get the stock. Like this guy here, he could have hid behind a rock instead of going out in the open being like, Oh look at me, I'm so good at the game. Do you know? So uh, here we are, tier 2. It's lovely. We know there's another survivor here as well. There they are, both of them run. That's really nice. The Kate. This is going to be very interesting now to see how these played. These survivors do come to understand that I do respect the crap out of pallets, you know, so... <laughs> There's no chance in them getting the pallets done. Right, so as you can see here, I pop my tier 3, I miss. I miss twice because he jumps in the locker. I think he's afraid that I have tombstone, that I have tombstone them. Which is okay, you know, that's the thing to think about when you're going against Myers if he pops tier 3. Feng doesn't really mind doing the gen in front of my face, so... I. Just tried to scare off the gen really. We've got two generators tinkering already. Turn our attention back to the thing, and she's running away to Killer Shack because everyone loves Killer Shack, you know, because the best loop in the game, guys. But now this is where it's going to get interesting because I remember this clearly is that the thing gets so brave that she even starts teabagging me. Imagine that you get so brave in a match you start teabagging the killer you know I'm coming back here because I know someone's already after rotating up to the survivor you know it's good to know that people are going to rotate in for the save I have no problem two gens have just popped so I'll make sure someone gets in the second phase it's better me do it this way so that I can pull the game back in my favor you know they're both going to try it now and they're giving me my stock so I'm happy enough I didn't mean to pop that tier 3 I really didn't I tried 99 it but it would work out in our favor because we get the Feng anyway. We do get this survivor into the second phase, which I'm happy enough with, you know. Because two gens popped, so I'm after losing two gens for one hook. But I'll make up for it by making sure that person that's just been hooked is basically into second phase on the first hook. That's how I make up for the loss in gens. I've now, you see, they're sweating because they don't know what to do for their um, teammates because there's two down. One's literally on death hook and is in the struggling phase, while the other's lying on the floor. And I'm in a good point here. So they're trying to bait me out to go further after the other survivor so one of them can get up or get off the hook. As you can see here, I go back and Kate's already after rescuing the Leon off the hook. He takes the slap for her, which is very good because. You know, I've tier 3, so she could have went down. Right here, you can see the Feng. She was trying to heal up. She's going to bring me for a nice little loop around Killer Shack. She goes through the window, and it shows us that she has life as an exhaustion perk. Now, you see the way I'm respecting the pallets. She pre-dropped it way too early. This is a mistake that most survivors make. You should not waste pallets like this. Look at this again. You think she learned from the first mistake, but no, she keeps doing that same mistake over and over again. It's funny. So we know she had the syringe to heal herself up completely, so that's not too bad, but we've injured her. So really the syringe all the syringe did was buy her extra time. Now you see the way she's standing there looking at me. That's when survivors do that to killers, that's taunting them, saying, Come on, come after me, keep coming after me, keep coming after me. And it's like, all right, I acknowledge the fact that you you want me to chase you, but at this point here, I just said no. I'm not chasing you because the gen's tinkering and I don't need to deal with you. Because I know that I'll catch you. Do you know, that's what you need to tell yourself. Kate tries to dedicate to the gen rare, but mistakenly misunderstood the fact that I had tier 3 ready to go. So it's, it's a shame for her that she got caught with it, but... Really, if you're going to try to dedicate to a gen in the killer's face, especially a killer like Michael Myers, that can literally pop tier 3 anytime he wants. Because most Michael Myers mains, if they know what they're doing, they'll 99 their tier 2, so that's right to pop into tier 3. And then when they have a, a good advantage against like two survivors, if they can pop it on two survivors and get that down, that's perfect. So now, as you can see here, guys, 
I'm securing the pressure on this gen because I know this gen's about to pop because it was only tinkered a couple of minutes ago. And the Feng is still trying to challenge me. She's trying to say, I'm coming in for the save. I'm going to get Kate down in front of you. And I'm like, yeah, and you're going to die for her. I do like um, confident survivors like this. I wouldn't say they're confident, confident, you know, that they know what they're doing. They're, I'd say, arrogant because it's not it's not that they're good game it's just they think they are and the cockiness is actually a disadvantage to the team now as you can see the kate's close to second phase which is good for me because the pressure is going to be on as you can see here i get the hit on the thing the thing doesn't mind that i got the hit on her because she's glad that she got the rescue but like i said before she will end up on the floor so all her little taunts that she was doing didn't work and that was a spectacular flashlight save there imagine going for a flashlight save when you're not actually facing the killer instead you decide to go and try flashlight save to the side of the killer's face that's quite funny actually <laughs> so here we are now again kate didn't get out of the area you know she could have used the time that when i was hooking the thing to get away from this area completely but she doesn't so i'm able to put her down again and most survivor mains would be like oh that's tunneling you're tunneling her but really i've just hooked your rescuer and went up this area and you were still in the area so it's not really tunneling if you do not leave the area after you've just been unhooked and heal up so i've hooked the case the fang is on the gen i kick the gen to regress it and i'm like right fang you want this showdown so bad i'll give you a showdown let's go and then she's back to pre-dropping pallets like there's no tomorrow this thing, I will say, was probably the worst player on her team because it, there was no aspect of looping. It was just drop pals, drop pals, drop pals, drop pals. Out of all the pals you've seen in this video that she's dropped, has one of them stunned me? Maybe just the one that she caught when I went for a swing? But other than that, she hasn't gotten a single pal stun after. Here we get the... Leon, he tried to use the dead hard. It didn't really work out for him. You know, he hit too early. So that puts him on death hook. So we find the Feng again. We give her a hit. She gets the speed boost. And then she decides to give an owl tea bag. Imagine tea bagging like when you're literally doing nothing but pre dropping pallets. So at this point, I'm just like, you know what, Feng? I can't wait to kill you. I abuse Michael's lunge and I catch her lovely. I'm nodding at her, telling her no. I hear her other teammate coming up around the corner. I swing so that I can hit her and she didn't get the pallet save. That's an effective method to get out of the way of the pallet if you're picking someone up in the middle of the pallet. Just as soon as you pick them up, swing. Because as you've seen, you get out of the way of the pallet. So I smack her on hook. You know, this is the treatment you get if you teabag me in a game. I will smack you on hook repeatedly until I feel comfortable that I've given you enough smacks. Here I am chasing the Fang again because you know if you teabag you're getting the full undivided attention. So Fang at this point is like I'm so good at the game I can loop you I can teabag you and Fang is just so brave that she even gets herself trapped by going into a dead end. You know, it's a rest in peace for this thing. You know, she outplayed herself really well here. I decide to break the door out, break the pallet. Then I come across the other thing, but she didn't know I had tier 3 ready. And I forgot about the pallet that was here, so I just swung around the corner and boom, got her. Now, the other teammate just opened the eggs gate and just left. He just bolted. He was like, fuck that shit, I'm out. And he just ran. He just left the two things to their own devices. You know, I got a 3k, I didn't get the 4k, but you know what? I'll take a 3k because the survivor that got out was lucky that they got out. And as you can see, I give her a good few slaps as a sign to say, Yes, you got my attention. Well done. Well played, Feng. Feng Min for the win. That Feng was the highlight of the game, to be honest. <laughs> if you've went on to enjoy today's video, guys, smash the like button, subscribe. Peace. Catch you next one.